In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And today we celebrate Christ, the Good Shepherd, who leads us, who lays down his life for us, who is risen and with us, and who invites us to this table. As we prepare ourselves, we pray together. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of thy Holy Spirit, by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against thee and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, to our own deliberate faults. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve thee in newness of life, to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord.
let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in him from the death of sin unto the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above, where he liveth and reigneth with thee, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The next day their rulers, elders and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man had been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with our spirit. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory be to thee, thee, O Lord. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that, that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to thee, O Christ. May I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Before we came to St Albans, I was curate in a benefice of four rural churches right up in the Cheshire region of the Peak District. 
Our home was right next door to a fully working farm, which our youngest daughter loved because it meant that she could get involved in taking care of the animals. The thing that she loved most of all was helping the, father, the farmer to feed the sheep, the bottle-fed sheep that had been abandoned by their mothers. At first she would go round to the farmer, she would knock on his door and drag him out to help her mix some milk and then they would go together into the field and they would bottle feed the abandoned sheep. However, before long, at just six years old, she was doing this whole routine from start to finish on her own without any help at all from the farmer. The field with the abandoned lambs in it was literally a minute from her school and it backed onto the road that I walked down and back up again to the school gate to take and collect her. On my way to pick her up, I would often sneak my hand through the fence in the hope that the lambs would come and that they would let me stroke them. However, they never did. They just scurried away as quickly as possible. Not so with Amara. The minute I picked her up from school and she came out of the school gate and chatted away as six-year-olds do, telling me all about her day, the lambs would come running right to the edge of the field, up to the fence, and desperately try to get their little noses through. As she put her hand gently through the fence, they would come and all start to suck on her fingers. There's absolutely no doubt at all that those lambs recognised Amara, and what's more, she recognised them. To me, they all looked identical as lambs do, but she knew each one by name, the name that the farmer had allowed her to give to them. It's an endearing picture, isn't it? And of course, there's an echo in that story of the tone of today's gospel reading. I know my sheep and my sheep know me, Jesus says. We've heard it many times, of course. Jesus is our good shepherd. He too knows each of us by name, our character and our ways. And of course, there are many references to this in the scriptures as well. He leads us beside still waters. He restores our soul. These are all images of serenity and peace, which are also beautifully portrayed in many a stained glass window. A shepherd with a lamb across his shoulders, carrying it across the hill country to safety. Like that endearing story of Amara with the lambs, the images in our stained glass windows speak of tenderness and an intimate relationship between the shepherd and his sheep. They are beautiful and they're right and we should take comfort from them. It's right to do so. However, they are not the whole story. And if we stop there, we fall into the trap of sanitising the gospel and missing the startling and profound truth that John wants us to hear in Jesus' words. The great tragedy of this it is that truth that the world so desperately needs to hear. So what exactly then does John want us to know? In verses 12 and 14, we hear that the hired hand sees the wolf and leaves the sheep, running away and abandoning them all to the wolf's jaws. We've all felt like that at some point, I'm sure, if not any other time over the last year. It's a desperate and a lonely and a terrifying place when we're abandoned to the wolf jaws. But I am the good shepherd, Jesus says. It doesn't matter how big the wolf or the lion or even the bear how big your problem, your sin, or your pain is. I don't run and I don't abandon. Rather, I lay down my life for the sheep. That is the extent of my love for you, Jesus says. 
John brings in this very vivid image of a sheep and a wolf and a shepherd for a specific purpose. He wants us to know something about Jesus. In the chapters before this passage, we've heard of a mounting hatred for Jesus, of death threats and of cryptic talk. Jesus speaking about going to that place where no other can follow him, even leaving the Jews wondering if maybe he is going to take his own life, chapter 8 tells us. There are dark undertones in John's Gospel, but it's all very cryptic and uncertain up until chapter 10. In chapter 10, however, that all changes. At this point, we are confronted with that very simple and direct image of a shepherd who will wrestle a wolf, a lion, a bear, or indeed any other predator to save his sheep, laying down his life that theirs may be saved. John puts this passage here because it is precisely at this point that he wants his readers and his hearers to realise that for Jesus, death isn't just a threat that looms somewhere over there in the distance. Rather, it's the vocation of the Messiah. It's who he is, and it's what true love really looks like. This is so far removed from my endearing stories and the sanitised images in our stained glass windows. Beautiful as they both are, they in no way communicate the reality of what it means for Jesus to really be our Good Shepherd. This passage would have been a deeply shocking and controversial passage to the initial hearers. It assaults the reality of our senses that this Messiah will indeed die. And what's more, in doing so, he will bring in not only the sheep that the people and maybe us to consider worthy, he will bring in the sheep from another fold. In other words, the gates will be flung wide open and those who society considers unworthy will be welcomed and scooped up into the flock. This isn't a neat image. This is a shepherd who will be ripped to pieces by a bear or a lion or a wolf. And not only that he may save the sheep who fit neatly into his flock, rather to draw all people to himself. This shepherd will indeed be like no other shepherd that Israel have known in their history. In Ezekiel chapter 34, God speaks through Ezekiel and tells his people exactly what the coming of this shepherd means. That the forceful and harsh rule that they have previously known will give way to a power that's made known in humility and in love and in sacrifice. In him, this shepherd, the weak will be strengthened, the sick will be healed, and the injured will be bound. He will bring back those who have strayed, will seek the lost, that all people may know that he is their God. So there will be one flock and one shepherd, Jesus says. We mustn't sanitise the gospel. This is the truth that the world so desperately needs to hear, that we too so desperately need to hear. In the Good Shepherd, we see the most unimaginable and costly love, a love that knows no limits. And so as his sheep, may we know that love. And may we also make it known, no matter what the cost, to the weak, the sick, the injured, the strayed and the lost, indeed to all people. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things are made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, we humbly beseech thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord, that all who confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, hear us. Grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, and especially to thy servant, Alan, our bishop, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Lord, hear us. Lord, grace, to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that they may serve thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. Lord, hear us. We beseech thee, O Lord, to direct with thy heavenly wisdom those who rule over the nations of the world. Bless thy servant, Elizabeth, our Queen, and all who exercise authority under her, that thy people may be faithfully and justly governed. Lord, hear us. Of thy goodness, O Lord, help and comfort all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, granting them a happy issue out of all their afflictions. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious hear us. We commend to thy gracious keeping, O Lord, all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, praying especially for Margaret Domain, Yvonne Foster, and Linda Lane. We beseech thee to grant them everlasting light and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious We bless thy holy name for the grace and virtue declared in the Blessed Virgin Mary, Alban, and in all thy saints. Grant that we, rejoicing in their fellowship and following their good examples, may be partakers of, with them of thy heavenly kingdom. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and abundant duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee. O Lord, Holy Father, almighty everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, thine only Son, our Lord. But chiefly are we bound to praise thee, because thou didst raise him gloriously from the dead. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was offered for us, and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, to the Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. 
who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And it institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks to thee, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy humble servants, having in remembrance the precious death and passion of thy dear Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all of the benefits of his passion. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits but pardoning our offences, and to grant that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ our Lord by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
Let us pray. O merciful Father, who gave us thy Son, Jesus Christ, to be the Good Shepherd, and in his love for us to lay down his life and rise again, keep us ever under his protection, and give us grace to follow in his steps, through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you, and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks.